at the Rye House Kart Raceway, the annual London Cup is one of the most exciting events on the British kart racing calendar. Each year, over a hundred of the best drivers from around the country come here to do battle in a variety of categories, each hoping to add their name to the prestigious list of London Cup champions. Amongst the list of former winners is 2017 British touring car champion Ash Sutton. He won the event as recently as 2013 and has fond memories of the circuit. Rye House is where I started at um, when I was a, a wee dot running down, running around at this height um, to, to current. So yeah, still involved in the place and it'd be a, be a part of my journey forever. Without karting I wouldn't be where, where I am now. I wouldn't have the race craft like I have. Um, so thankfully this place was down the road. Um, it was my mum and dad that got me here, got me to Rye House, got me going around. Um, and yeah, it's ever since I, ever since I've got behind a wheel of a cart, it's played a part. Every little thing that I do, whether it's an overtaking manoeuvre, a qualifying lap, all comes back to the karting days. And Ash is still heavily involved with both Rye House and karting, helping to develop future talent with the Team BMR Academy. Back in 2014, I joined the academy, part of being the first driver on the on the program. Um, and without them guys. I wouldn't have been where I am today, standing there as a, a British Touring Car Champion. So I'm still involved in, in the team that, in that manner. We, I help sort of mentor the, the drivers. Um, so we've, we've got a great, great little team up amongst us and it's good helping young drivers develop and, and bring them up through the programme that I've been through. Aspiring racing drivers can begin to develop their skills behind the wheel at just six years of age by competing in the Bambino category. After cutting their teeth there, the next phase is to move into cadets for drivers aged 8 to 13. Here the racing is unbelievably close and a real training ground for future racing talent. It is possible to dip your toe into the water before committing to buying your own cart and equipment. Here at Rye House there are a number of higher cart championships for both juniors and seniors where all the equipment is provided. And for drivers like Caden Morrison, this has proven to be an effective way to get into the sport. I started one day in a corporate, uh, just like the go-karts, what you pay there, and then you drive their own go-karts. So then one day I just got in one of those, and then since then I bought a go-kart for my friend, my dad did, and then I was started racing from there. They're really fun. Uh, depends what go kart you, you're in. They all feel quite different because um, there's. I've got a project one at the minute, and it's good because you can get to feel it around the corners and like drive it through the corners. It's really fun. Our first bout of action comes from the 60cc Honda Cadet category. En route to the final, the drivers took part in a timed qualifying session and two heats. British Championship frontrunner Oliver Greenall set the fastest time in qualifying, but both Sonny Smith and Archie Brown almost matched his time, the top three covered by just 86 thousandths of a second. Greenall went on to win the first heat, but hit trouble in the second and could only finish 15. That one was won by Smith, and by picking up more points than anyone else across both races, it was he that qualified on pole for the final, with Brown alongside. Daryl Taylor lined up third after finishing second and third in his two heats. And despite the disappointment of heat two, Greenall qualified fourth, with Aston Miller and Reese Lomax completing the top six. 28 drivers all set for 12 minutes of Honda Cadet racing here at Rye House, ready for the standing start. Sonny Smith, number 95, on pole position, gets the race underway. Going with him is Archie Brown, number one, but the inside line and the race lead will go to Smith. Brown in second, Daryl Taylor, number 18, third, I reckon. 
and Oliver Green, all number 64, looked like he stayed in fourth place. Through Reggie's elbow for the first time, the race leader looks over his shoulder into the infield hairpin. Now it's number three up to fourth place. That's Aston Miller ahead of Oliver Greenhall on board with Hayden Eldridge from 18th on the grid, drawing alongside Josh Patch in the 93 cart as he tries to make early progress through the outfield hairpin, though Patch is able to keep him at bay as the leaders thud over the curbs on the way into Pylon and Complex Nouvelle for the first time in the race through the S Ben section. The top five altogether, a bit of a gap back then to sixth place, which is 67, Alfie Moore, who's made up one position off the start. You ride with Daryl Taylor, third at the end of lap one, up ahead, number one, Archie Brown goes for the lead and gets it on the way to stadium. Taylor's going to follow him through, and so from first down to third place for Sonny Smith in the 95 cart. Here they come, the top three together, fourth and fifth. Have swapped as well, Oliver Green, all number 64, back where he started in fourth place, as Taylor loses the place back to Sonny Smith at the infield hairpin. So back to second for the 95 cart. As soon as they start battling, look, it brings fourth and fifth closer to them, Green all and Miller on board with Hayden Eldridge. He made up four places on the first lap of the race. He's onto the tail of this year's club champion, Spencer Baldwin, in the number 38 cart. Those two battling for 14th place. A close, frenetic start to the race, but it's been good, clean, fair racing so far. Look at this battle here for third place. 64, Oliver Greenall drawing alongside Daryl Taylor and sneaks through on the way to stadium. So Greenall, it dropped from fourth to fifth on lap number one. He's back into the top three and forcing his way through as well. He's number three, Aston Miller. Both of those drivers, Greenall and Miller, top runners in the Super 1 British Karting Championship. Greenall fourth in this year's national category and fifth place overall for Aston Miller. So they are two of the very best Honda Connect drivers in the country. A pair of them now run third and fourth. There they are, making their way to Parlin, already closing the gap to number 95, Sonny Smith. And not that far ahead of him is the race leader, Archie Brown. Daryl Taylor, who also competes in the Super 1, down to fifth place. Right behind him, number 45, Jake Genovese, up into sixth position now as they thunder over the start-finish line towards this incredibly quick right-hander at Stadium Bend. So there is number 95, Sonny Smith, and he can feel the presence now of Greenall in the 64 cart. Is the gap going to open up on the way into the infield? Having one of the favourite overtaking spots, it does. He gets halfway alongside, and he goes through. Number three trying to follow through is Aston Miller. He gets alongside, but there's a right-hander coming up but it will be a place lost then. So it's up to second for Greenall. Smith, number 95, third. Fourth place right behind them, Aston Miller, number three. Still leading the race, but not by much. He's Archie Brown in the number one cart. Here they come through the S's once more. The top six in this race are covered by just one and a half seconds as they exit Paddock Bend onto the start-finish straight. You're on board with Darrell Taylor. Getting back onto the tail now of the number three cart of Aston Miller, hunting him down on the way to Stadium Bend. Darrell finished seventh in the London Cup last year in 2016. Taylor has also been a top six finisher in the overall club championships for the last couple of seasons as he sees his chance on the way through into the hairpin. They're both sent out wide, but Taylor in the 18 cart goes through. Number three Miller then down to fifth place and the group of carts just behind getting ever closer to them so a glance over the shoulder here from Taylor you can see number 45 Jake Genovese is with them so too is Scott Smith number 37 into seventh place then there's a tiny gap back then you've got Ed Pearson number 41 Alfie Moore number 67 just behind as well and oh no number 13 Yehan Kalichern is out I'm afraid with problems so that's the end of his London Cup as we see a change of lead that's Oliver Greenall going down the inside on the way into Stadium Bend to snatch first place away from Archie Brown as they go past the scene of the stricken number 13 cart. Number 95, Sonny Smith, is back with them as well. So the top three absolutely glued together. And we're also being treated to this seven-way battle for fifth place. Number 45, Genovese. Number three, Miller. 37, Smith. 41, Pierce. And 67 more. At 52 is Reese Lomax just behind. And 71, here you see a Mantis on the tail of that group as well. So some fantastic racing here at the London Cup. The entire top ten lapping within three or four tenths of a second of one another. At the moment, it's Oliver Green, all the race leader, number 64, who's got the fastest lap of the race with a 43.3. There he is, still with both Brown and Smith shadowing his every move. The driver's being urged on in this battle for 12th place. 38, Spencer Baldwin. 27, Harry Cook is in there. 61, Hayden Eldridge. Uh, 85, Caden Morrison. 93, Josh Patch. 7 is Joe Cheek just behind them. And Josh Agambar, number 94. So a tremendous battle here in the midfield. We saw the onboard camera there from Josh Patch in the 93 cart, right under the tail of Hayden Eldridge. There with the bright green helmet. Eldridge trying to outgun the 85 cart of Caden Morrison on the exit to the hairpin.
over the line to complete another lap. The top three still joined at the hip. They're pulled away now from Daryl Taylor in fourth place. Behind him, Jake Genovese is in fifth position. And this is getting incredibly close now for second place. Archie Brown coming under close scrutiny from the 95 card of Sonny Smith, who pulls into the gap, goes up the inside, gets his nose in front, but bravely hanging on around the outside. Archie Brown holds on to second. There's Callum Follen in 19th, just about the only person not having a battle out there at the moment. Look at this, six-way squabble for 20th place. 89, Alfie Thompson being shadowed by 88, Callum Gosh, 80, Connor Baines. Number 10, Harry Martin is in there. 29 is Thomas Warner, 34, Jensen Weston. All in formation as they head down into the hairpin section with Alfie Thompson still at the head of that group. Ahead of them, a three-way battle for 14th place on board with Josh Patch. 61, Hayden Eldridge up the inside of Kada Morrison. A brave move. They all go out wide. Patch tries to get in on the mix. He's on the grass there as he tries to find a way past Morrison as well. So brave move that from Hayden Eldridge. As we go back to the race leader, into the closing stages here. Number 64, Oliver Greenall with a controlled drive from fourth on the grid. Fifth place at one stage, but he now leads with just a couple of laps to go. We've still got fourth and fifth tied together, Daryl Taylor and Jake Genovese, and this is the squabble for sixth place. Aston Miller, number three, ahead of Edward Pearson, number 41. Alfie Moore just behind in the eight cart. Scott Smith and Reese Lomax rounding out the top ten as they head for the penultimate time into the left-hander at Pile and Bend and through Complex Nouvelle, just having lost touch now with the two ahead of them. This final has been run at an absolutely breathtaking pace. Uh, one of the novice drivers with the black and white plates just learning their trade is number 17, Riley Price. He's coming up to be lapped by the leaders on the final lap. About to start their final tour of the Rye House Kart Raceway. Harry Cook, Spencer Baldwin and Hayden Eldridge for 12th place. 27, Harry Cook just at the head of that group now. There's the 85 cart of Caden Morrison still ahead of Josh Patch, who goes on the curbs now to try and find a gap, to try and prize the door open. Is he close enough to attack on the way into the left-hand hairpin? No, because Caden Morrison is very good on the brakes. The race leader through Paddock Bend for the final time. The chequered flag awaits. And Oliver Greenall is the 2017 London Cup champion. Archie Brown just two tenths of a second behind is the runner-up. And Sonny Smith completes the top three. Confirmation of the final result with Daryl Taylor coming home in fourth, ahead of Jake Genovese and Edward Pearson. Alfie Moore, Aston Miller, Scott Smith and Rhys Lomax also make the top 10. We look forward to our second race of the day from the London Cup. The action comes from the first of two Bambino categories for six to eight year olds. In this one, the carts are all powered by 60cc IAMI engines. With just one full season of racing under his belt, Jacob Ashcroft has shown great potential and has picked up some support from Laser Tools Racing, the team behind British touring car race winner, Aidan Moffat. You're one of the youngest drivers, aren't you? Yeah. How old are you? How long have you been racing? Six, and I've been racing one year. What are you hoping for today with the results? Um, I'm hoping for a third place. So you'd be really happy if you can get on the podium? For the future, what would you like to do? I want to do Formula One when I'm older. So you'd love to be a racing driver for a job? Yeah. I guess you've got a favourite Formula One driver as well, haven't you? Lewis Hamilton. I thought you might say that. Jacob had two excellent drives in the heats, second and third place finishes, putting him fourth on the grid for the final. A pair of second place finishes would put Mason Redmond just ahead, third on the grid, with Riley Wright, a heat winner, qualifying second but it was Joseph Katzentonis who would go into the final as the odds-on favourite, having won both of his heats, one of them by a whopping 23 seconds. The top 13 drivers qualified automatically for the final, with everyone else going into a B final. Here, the top two finishers would join the back of the grid for the main race. So, in order to qualify from fifth on the grid, Connor Scarisbrick had work to do, and there was a big scare as number one, Poppy Thomas, span right in front of him at the hairpin. But he avoided contact, picking up third place in the process. He then set about hunting down pole sitter Jacob Anslow and grabbed that all-important second place with this move at turn one. But the runaway winner of the race was number 98, Lewis Werrell. And so both he and Scarisbrick will continue their day with an appearance in the final, where the first five rows of the grid shaped up like this. Grid is cleared. It's going to be a standing start for the Bambino Iami A final. Lights out. Away we go. Joseph Cansantonis in the zero cart from pole position. He's going to lead into turn one. 
followed by Riley Wright. Jacob Ashcroft in the 22 card has moved ahead of Mason Redmond for third spot. You're on board with Jacob Nam as they charge through Reggie's elbow for the first time in the race. Jacob gets a good run out of the corner and he's going to draw alongside Riley Wright here. This is the rear facing on board. He's already through by the time they get to the corner, but he runs out wide on the exit to the hairpin. And Wright's going to come back alongside him. A right hander coming up, but Wright is there and just clings on to his second place. This is all brought closer to them. The number 20 card of Kasper Tomalewski. And also, then you've got Mason Rudman, number 15, joining the party. So second, third, fourth, and fifth, all tied together through the S's for the first time. And Tomalewski is coming alongside Ashcroft here to try and gain a place. He whips around the outside. On the way to Paddock, Ben Drew comes 15. Mason Rudman and slips out wide. I think he's spun, yeah. A half spin for Mason Rudman, one of the front runners here. He recovers quickly, but rejoins just behind Teddy Woodard, number 31. So that is going to put him down into 13th place at the end of the first lap of the race. So that was a near miss, a close thing, as you saw from the onboard camera of Jacob Ashcroft, but the 22 cart survives in fourth place, though, because he had lost that position to Tomalewski. So we've got Captain Tonis well clear. seconds clear at the end of the first lap of the race. Ronnie Wright in second, third, Tomalewski, fourth. Ashcroft running out wide down, coming under pressure now from Lewis Werrell, number 98, who's made a phenomenal start. He was 11th on the grid, so six places gained on that opening lap. 33, Jack Robinson completing the top six at the moment. And now Werrell is drawing alongside Ashcroft. He's whipped around the outside through the second part of the S's. There's the view from Ashcroft. And that's down to fifth place now. That was where he lost the position on the previous lap as well. Ashcroft, one of the least experienced drivers in the field. Those we see a challenge here for second place. Tremendous move that from Tomalewski in the 20 car. He carried the speed all the way out through Paddock Bend, up the straight and uh, spider gap on the way into stadium and already look he's begun to rock it away however there's a big old gap to try and make up to the leader he's almost clean out of sight already after just two laps of racing cuts and turn is leading by just over five seconds after two laps uh, from Tomalewski now right in third Werrell with this excellent start up to fourth place Ashcroft fifth Robinson in sixth place then we've got Fowler, uh, Joe Lewis has gained a place up to eighth. The GP plate had a bad start, Riley Cranham. He's back into the top ten, so too back into the top ten. He's Mason Redman in the 15 car after that spin at the end of lap number one. Well, Joseph Katzentonis is in a different race here. He's nearly seven seconds clear now after three laps of racing. But look, a challenge and contact in the battle for the final spot of the podium. That was will to will between Lewis, Werrell and Roddy Wright. And it was Werrell who came through in the 98 car. So Roddy Wright, after a, a good qualifying, a good set of heats, a good strong start to the race, has just slipped off the podium positions now. And he's got Jacob Ashcroft breathing down his neck as well. Uh, on board with Jacob now as he makes his way into the outfield hairpin. Runs uh, out nicely onto this back straight into the very quick left-hander through Pylon and then in towards his S section where Ashcroft has uh, been struggling at the start of the race, but he's coming back into it now. So this the squabble for second place. There's the leader. Uh, if he had mirrors, he'd look in them and he'd see nothing because he is so far clear. Joseph Katzentonis with a quality drive here. It is a rare thing to see anybody win by more than a couple of lengths at the London Cup, never mind the entire straight length, as we see Werrell coming up the inside now of Tomalewski and gains another place at Stadium Ben. That's two in two laps to go from fourth to second. Flat out through Stadium Ben, that's number 15, Mason Rudman, who's having a really strong recovery here after that uh, problem at the end of lap number one. He's back up into the top six. He's overtaken the 33 cars of Jack Robinson and just behind Jack then, number 99 is Jack Fowler. The GP plate, Riley Cranham and six, Joe Lewis squabbling over 11th. This is the battle for 12th place between 88, Logan Howes and swarming all over the back of him. Number 28, Connor Scarisbrick. They charge through Stadium Bend as we go back on board with Jacob Ashcroft making his way onto the start, finish straight now. Still with Riley right in his sights and in the background you can see number 15, Mason Redman, trying to catch them up having gone back through the field. So on the exit to Stadium Ben, the 22 carts of Jacob Ashcroft accelerates and we know he's got on the brakes on the way into the hairpins but so too is Riley Wright. The gap closes up a little bit but opens up again on the exit here side by side again this battle for 13th place. Logan has on the inside, Connor Scarisbrick on the outside whipping around now on the exit to the turn into Reggie's elbow though a nice tight line taken by Logan Howes this is the battle for fourth place then and coming up to lap novice driver Sky Parker that's the rear facing camera from Jacob Ashcroft and look how much closer Mason Redman has got on this lap he's not quite within striking distance but Ashcroft has dropped back suddenly 
perhaps delayed through that traffic and a combination of a not great lap by him and a very strong lap by Mason Redman. That means that the gap is now just about two cart lengths. So uh, these are the two almost came together with that incident through Paddock Bend at the end of lap number one. It seems inevitable, such is the speed that the 15 car of Mason Redmond carries. And through he whips on the exit to the turn. So back up to fifth place now, having been 13th at one point. A bit further back, a great three-way tussle developing here for seventh place. 33, Jack Robinson still with Jack Fowler shadowing him, but the pair have now been joined by novice racer George Davison. He's up into the top 10, ninth place, and having a very strong run here as they make their way through the hairpins, getting ever closer to the tail of Robinson is Fowler. And taking absolutely no prisoners is Mason Redman. He gains another place almost immediately, this time on Riley Wright. So back up to fourth spot now. I think a podium might be just out of reach for him, but what a tremendous comeback it has been for him. And already, look, the speed he carries on the way out of the hairpins. He's already two or three lengths clear. So Jacob Ashcroft is free now to resume the battle that he's been having with Riley Wright. But this time it's going to be the sixth place rather than fifth. Still, a top six finish in an event which is as competitive as this is mighty impressive. There is your race leader, Joseph Katzentonis. At last, he's got somebody to play with, somebody to follow and overtake, but it's back markers. He's absolutely masterly. He's over eight seconds clear. He pulled most of his advantage in the first few laps of the race and has just managed things since then. So it has been a serene drive as the chequered flag awaits for Joseph Katzentonis. He doesn't need to rush through the traffic. And starting their final lap of the race, we've got this squabble for fifth place getting even tighter. Riley Wright is going to have to work hard through the traffic to fend off Jacob Ashcroft, but the chequered flag awaits and an absolutely dominant victory at the London Cup for Joseph Katzentonis. He wins by over eight seconds. It's going to be Lewis Werrell from 11th on the grid who comes home second, so tremendous drive from him as well. And the final spot on the podium is going to go to Kasper Tomalewski, but only just because Mason Rudman closed the gap to just three tenths of a second by the chequered flag. And here's confirmation of the rest of the results with Riley Wright and Jacob Ashcroft completing the top six. Joe Lewis, Teddy Woodard, George Davison and Jack Robinson also in the top ten. Next, we take a look at the first of our senior categories for drivers aged 16 and above, the 125cc powered senior Rotax class. Harry Platten started the day by setting the fastest time in qualifying, but it was Sean Berry who beat him to victory in the opening heat. He then inherited a second victory when Heat 2 winner Hayden Cater was later penalised by places. Unbeaten so far then, it would be Berry lining up on pole with Platten alongside. Spencer Barrow and Bobby Grove share row two, with Hayden Cater and Daniel Devereaux completing the top six. It will be a rolling start for the senior Rotax Max final 47. Sean Berry on pole position leads them towards the start line and into turn one. He's the leader of the race and up to second place is Spencer Barrow, number 32. He's gone from third to second ahead of number 41, Harry Platten. Also moving up one, Aidan Cater, number four, has got ahead of Bobby Grove for fourth place. Into the hairpin for the first time in a spin for Connor Jupp, number 35 from 10th on the grid. Also off there in the uh, background was 64, Jamie Clark. And also we've got two others off, 44, Josh Young and 34, Shane Hickman. So drama at the first hairpin, leading the race from pole position though is uh, Sean Berry, the number 47 car with a good start here. At the end of lap number one though, he's only going to be a length or so clear of Spencer Barrow. Spencer who was seeded in the top 10 in the country as a junior, took some time off, came back a couple of years ago as a senior and was ranked 12th in the British Championships. Some proven drivers in this field. They're number four, Hayden Cater. You saw the onboard camera from him. And this is the onboard from Connor Jupp, who is about to regain one position into the hairpin. That's on number 62, Dan O'Brien. That moves him up to 17th. He was 19th at the end of lap number one, so that spin cost Connor Jupp nine positions. And we're going to get a replay of the Connor Jupp incident now. Look to the left of the picture, Connor Jupp around the outside on the curbs, on the grass and a half spin. This is the onboard view. He had to take evasive action, and once he was on the grass, he lost the back end of the cart. Back to the leaders, Berry from Barrow, and then coming up the inside, Harry Platten, number 41. He gets down the inside, following it through is Hayden Cater in the four cart. They both get ahead of Spencer Barrow, and he is demoted then from second out of fourth there in the number 32 cart. So up into a podium paying place now for Hayden Cater, following through the 41 cart of Harry Platten. It was a decisive move on the way into the hairpin. We get a view from Harry Platten there. The gap just about opens up. He commits to the move. Spencer Barrow gives him room, and Caton followed him through. 
So that move has allowed Sean Berry to edge clear in the lead of the race by just under six tenths of a second from Harry Platten, Hayden Cater and Spencer Barrow. Then number 18, Bobby Grove, leads a four-way train in the battle for fifth place. Daniel Devereux and Tom Sullivan just behind him. On board with Connor Jap. he's alongside the triple two card of Dean Mayer and goes through at Stadium. Whips through and that puts him back up to 13th place now, so he's almost back where he started after that lap one spin. The battle for fifth place makes its way through the S's. Number one, Tom Sullivan in that group, gained four places on the first lap. Alex Cobb is just behind him in the 68 cart. There are the leaders, the gap is coming down again, so it was six tenths of a second, it's now almost nothing luck as Harry Platten gets himself right onto the tail of the race leader, Sean Berry, in the number 47 cart, joining them for the party is Hayden Cater at number four, they're pulling clear now of Spencer Barrow, just a little love tap there on the second placed cart on the exit to the outfield hairpin, but good acceleration from Sean Berry on the back straight down towards Pylon. Uh, there is the number 18 car of Bobby Grove, still hanging on to fifth place from Daniel Devereux, Tom Sullivan, Alex Cobb. Then it's number six, Dean Bristow in ninth, and three, Tony Dickinson running out the top ten, whipping through this ultra-quick section at Stadium, and Reggie's elbow are the two leaders. Number 47, Sean Berry has got Harry Platten almost with him into the hairpin. They're coming up to a back marker as well. Oh, the race leader gets held up. Platten's got his nose in front. There's contact between then Sean Berry and Hayden Cater, and he's down from first to third for Berry, and the back marker was number 64, Jamie Clark. He got caught up in that as well. He's off the road but will rejoin. That's his second incident of oh, what's been a frustrating race for him so far. But the most frustrated person will be Sean Berry there. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time and ready to pounce was Harry Platten and Hayden Cater followed him through. So there's your new race leader, Spencer Barrow. He's onto the tail of Berry now and gains a place on the way to stadium. So suddenly the 47 cart of Sean Berry is down to fourth place. He's off the podium. He was leading the race 30 seconds ago. Then we've got number one cart of Tom Sullivan, Luck at the head of the next group. So he's up to fifth place, ahead of Alex Cobb in sixth. The one that's gone backwards in that group is Bobby Grove, number 18. Dean Bristow and Tony Dickinson remain ninth and tenth. And now Scott Young, number seven, has got Connor Jupp all over him for 11th place. Connor, who has an excellent pedigree, a former runner-up in the British Cadet Karting Championships. He's raced in Europe very successfully and in the United States as well. Meanwhile, up ahead, that was 79, Aaron White moving ahead of Max Williams for 13th in the 227 cart. And you're on board with Dean Mayer in the triple two cart, trying to get involved in that battle as well. On board with Dan O'Brien, number 62, having a tremendous battle here with number 27, Simon Spaniolo for 17th. Our two leaders go screaming over the line and into stadium bend, separated by just about a tenth of a second. And now a couple of seconds clear of the two-way battle for third place between Spencer Barrow and the former race leader, Sean Berry. There they are. Berry in the 47 car gets a good run out of Reggie's elbow through the inside of the hairpin he goes and he regains third spot. So two two-way battles here, one for the lead and one for the final place on the podium. Hayden Cater is closer than he's ever been in this race. Past the back marker they go through the S's, through Paddock Bend to start a new lap. And it couldn't be closer for third and fourth positions either. We're on to the final lap of the race and Hayden Cater had a look at the inside there, showing his intent on the way to Stadium Bend. Harry Platten has got to hang on to this for another 25 seconds or so. He can't leave the door open, he's defensive on the way to the hairpin. He runs a bit wide on the exit, there's contact between them and through comes Hayden Cater. Muzzling his way through, Platt keeps going but he's down to second and he's lost a bit of momentum on the way out of the corner as well. So Harry Platten having led the race for so long, now looks like he's going to have to settle for the runner-up spot. It is number four, Hayden Cater, through Paddock Bend for the final time in the race. The chequered flag awaits, and Hayden Cater punches the air, crosses the line first, and wins the race. Harry Platten will be despondent in second. Let's get a replay. He's defensive on the way into the corner. He tried, he tried, he tried to close the gap, but through had come already Hayden Cater. This is the point of view from the second place cart. Cuts back to the inside. And there was the contact rubbing wheels. They were lucky they both didn't go off the road. Harry Platten, the leader, his perspective, he went right up in the air, like two wheels off the ground. As through came Hayden Cater, a slow-mo. And you can see here sparks flying as the rear bumper grazed on the tarmac surface.
And after the race was over, both Platten and Cater were disqualified for technical infringements, promoting Spencer Barrow into first place, with the final results seeing Sean Berry and Tom Sullivan also promoted onto the podium. Alex Cobb, Daniel Devereaux and Dean Bristow completing the top six. In a sport where drivers' lap times are separated by just tenths of a second, a lot of work goes into preparing the carts and tweaking the setups both before and throughout each race day. It's not always as easy as just turn up, get the car out of the van and off you go. Um, you've got to do a lot of testing, back-to-back -back in engines, motors, tyres, wheels. There's quite a lot of prep that goes into it really, so people don't understand that. They think just get in a go-kart, go round and round, get fast, but it doesn't work like that. After the heats, we'll check everything, make sure there's no problems. Um, end of the race day, we'll have the engine off, wheels off, check the cart on the flatbed so it's ready to go for the next meeting, strip the carb stand, check the squish on the motors, make sure they've not built up too much carbon. Yeah, just make sure they're ready to go and legal for the next one, really. It's back to the Bambino age category for our next final, this time with the Coma engine to carts. Having taken a heat win apiece, Lewis Islin and Zach Drummond share the front row. It's time for the Bambino Coma final here at the 2017 London Cup. The grid's cleared. The red lights are about to turn green. They do. The race gets underway with 46. Lewis Islin on pole. Decent start. Good start from Zach Drummond in the S cart. An even better start for Fletcher Jamieson. 99 squeezes past both of them. He goes from third to first, using the curbs to do so. And there is the race leader. 99 Fletcher Jamieson with a tremendous start. Islin already looks pretty determined to get the place back though on the exit to the hairpin. He draws alongside, but the better line for the next turn will be with Jamieson. So he should still lead. He does. He's got to be careful not to go out too wide on the exit again though, because Lewis Islin will once more draw alongside him. Left hander coming up. Again, it's going to favour Jamieson. So it's been a battle, but he leads the race. Islin in second. Third is the Scottish karting champion Zach Drummond. And now Lewis Islin drawing alongside for a third time. Is he going to make it this time? Yes, he squeezes down the inside, but watch for Zach Drummond. He got a better run coming out of the corner. It's going to be three abreast, four abreast, and there's contact around goes 99, Fletcher Jamieson. And he was sandwiched there. I'm not sure he was involved in the initial contact. I suspect it was between Lewis Islin and the 14 card of Fraser Anderson. It all means that Zach Drummond has got the lead of the race. Kip Belovsky's gained places as well up to 11th position and gaining another one. This is a tidy move uh, ahead of Mayan Patel in the number 20 car. That was on the way into the first hairpin with the rear facing camera. And now a replay of this big incident over the start finish line. 46 Islin just clips the back wheel of the 14 Fraser Anderson car, then sent back into Fletcher Jamieson, who came off worse. There's no intent here whatsoever. It's just three of them trying to be on the same piece of track at the same time. It was a tight squeeze. Eventually something had to give and it did. Number eight has to take to the grass in avoidance, Riley Boxall. Sonny Boxall in the six cart is delayed and great weaving through and reactions from Leith Khan, number 77, to avoid all of that. The crowd here at Rye House watches on as we get the two leaders closer than ever. Lewis Islin coming back up the inside to try and regain the lead goes deep into the corner, Zach Drummond with the S-cart gets back alongside him on the exit, it's almost a tiny bit of contact, but Drummond has to concede the position on the way into the outfield hairpin, so Lewis Isling gets his nose back in front, still hanging on to third place is Riley Boxall in the number eight cart from Fraser Anderson, here then the two race leaders, Lewis Isling was the 2016 Bambino club champion here at Rye House, also finished just off the podium fourth in the end of season Bambino festival at this circuit last year. And he's trading blows here with Zach Drummond, the Scottish karting champion, who now fires one up the inside into stadium. He's on the curves, he's alongside. They give each other just enough room. Tremendous driving from both parties. I think it's fair to say we're in for an absolute treat here, but looking nervously over his shoulder is Drummond because Islin is already coming back at him. Down the inside at the first hairpin, runs a bit deep into the corner, almost a carbon copy of one lap ago, but Islin has the line for the second hairpin again, though he runs out wide and Drummond gets him back. They're swapping positions every two or three corners here. So terrific racing this from the drivers to race so closely, uh, largely without any contact. Through the S's they come again. Uh, further back then, it is Boxall from Duncan. Jamieson is almost with them now in seventh. Henry Domain and Leith Khan and Kip Belofsky are all in the top ten as well. So several novice drivers up there in the top ten. What about for the third place? Can there be a change this time? It's absolutely wheel to wheel here. Squeezing through, though, to get the place is Fraser Anderson, number 14. Riley Boxall made him work for it, but he was utterly committed to the move. Knew he'd got the line once he got to Stadium Bend, and he just had to brave it out through the exit to the corner.
Fraser actually set the new fastest lap of the race with a 50.044 to get to that point. And joining them is number 99, Fletcher Jamieson, who is the second quickest man on the track. More action further back. That's a lovely move from Kit Belofsky with the number 19 cart to move ahead of number three, Henry Domain. So the novice driver, who struggled a bit in the heats, is now going well. He's up to ninth place in the race that matters most, the London Cup final. Well, there he is, bit of contact on the way out of the corner, though, as he ran wide. Henry Domain just clipped his rear wheel. Well, fairly hefty hit, but he survives and stays in ninth place with the rear-facing on-board camera. Now, this is number 99, Fletcher Jamieson, the early race leader, having a go at Riley Boxall for fourth place. He doesn't hang around. He gets the first opportunity sorted straight away, and through he comes. Next target for him, then, is a place back on the podium. Fraser Anderson just ahead. Remember, he was the one that got caught out of this start line incident at the end of lap number one and dropped to seventh place. Lost quite a bit of momentum, but he's had uh, such speed in this race that he's able to come back very quickly. There's still a few laps to go. A podium is definitely on the cards here. I think the top two are probably a bit too far ahead and he will be frustrated when he looks back on this because he did have a chance to win the race. But if he can get at least a podium out of it, I think that will be an excellent effort for the novice driver. Heading into the closing stages, the top two, Lewis Islin, head down, trying to make himself as aerodynamic as possible, and Zach Drummond trying to pick up the toe. They cross the line just 57 thousandths of a second apart, and in the background, there's been a change for third. That was at Stadium, I think, so back into the podium paying positions is Fletcher Jamieson, number 99, 14. Fraser Anderson down to fourth place. Right with them still, though, Riley Boxall, number eight. This is a squabble for 12th place, Mayan Patel, number 20, and number 33, Oliver Birch and all. And they're coming up to be lapped by the two leaders as Drummond looks at the inside, goes on the grass, goes over the curb. The door was firmly closed in his face, though. He clenches his fist. He's a bit disappointed about that. And he's lost momentum as he got time enough to close the gap back up and get another chance at this. Meanwhile, half a lap back, making their way through onto the start-finish straight are Kit Belofsky and Henry Domain battling for ninth place just ahead of them. That's Leith Khan, number 77, who used his great reactions to avoid all the carnage at the end of lap number one. Uh, but they are catching him up all over the back of Kit Belofsky here, who's having his best race so far today, is Henry Domain. The door possibly opens up on the way into the hairpin, but Belofsky is good on the brakes and holds him off. He runs a bit wide on the exit, though. They come together, but Belofsky's still ahead. Sorry absolutely everything at this is Henry Domain to try and get the place back. Two more laps to go. The race leaders coming up to lap this battle between Mayan Patel and Oliver Birch and all. There is third place. Fletcher Jamieson fourth. Fraser Anderson just falling away from them slightly now. Riley Boxall in fifth place. Sonny Boxall still sixth. They're coming up to the traffic here. It's side by side as Zach Drummond gets the inside line into the hairpin. Lewis Islin was uh, delayed in the traffic there and Drummond's gone back through. So they swap the lead for the umpteenth time in this race with a lap and a half remaining. It's been an enthralling contest, a tremendous battle between these two. They're equally deserving of the 2017 London Cup title, but it can only go one way. Nervous times for the family and friends watching from the sidelines. These drivers, though, in complete control of this. Who is going to have the final say through to start the final lap of the race? They go. And you've now got the third place battle lapping traffic as well. So that's hotting up the final place on the podium. Drummond and Islin side by side again. Drummond still with his nose in front going into Stadium Bend. Whipping around the outside though is Lewis Islin. He has to settle back into formation, but he's got good speed on the exit to Reggie's elbow. He sees the gap. He gets his foot in the door. He's got his nose in front. He's got to slow the car down though. He goes a bit too fast into the corner, runs deep, so Drummond takes the place back, coolly looks over his shoulder, half a lap to go for them. About to start his final lap, Kit Belovsky goes out wide, and number three, Henry Domain, will draw alongside, and I think he'll get the place through. So change for ninth, going on to the final lap of the race. But here are the top two, and it's still Drummond just clear of Islin for the final time. They exit Paddock Hill Bend, and it is going to be the 2017 London Cup Championship Trophy. He could not be happier at the moment. What a race. However, a key talking point came after the race when Drummond was handed a five-place penalty by the officials for dangerous driving, demoting him to sixth and promoting Islin into first place. The last race of the day is for the Rotax 177 category for drivers aged 16 and above.
similar spec to the 125cc Senior Rotax carts we saw earlier, but with an increased minimum weight limit. The sport is open to all ages, and one competitor that's recently come back to karting following a 14-year absence is Richard Allison, and he believes the sport is more competitive than ever. It's fast and furious, uh, the setups you've got to be bang on, otherwise, you know, you'll be spinning off, taking other people out, um, and uh, yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's difficult, but it's, it's coming. If I can get in the top 10, top 12, that'd be quite good, but to be honest, if I'd practiced, I would have liked to have got in the top six. Undoubtedly, the driver to beat in this class was Adam Sadler, following victory in both of the qualifying heats. He would start from pole with Nathan Rawlings alongside. Oliver Clark and Scott Clee fill the second row with Andrea De Luca and Danny Ryder just behind. So as dusk sets in here at Rye House, we are about to get the final race of the 2017 London Cup underway. Adam Sadler on pole for the Rotax 177s. In the 67 cart, he's just about going to hold the lead of the race here under intense scrutiny from Nathan Rawlings in 101 and from Oliver Clark as well. He made a good start in the number 24 cart. Then it is 116. Scott Clear who holds station in fourth place as the carts make their way through the infield hairpin for the first time with no dramas. One or two jostling for position, but everybody safely through the first half lap. And starting to pull clear now is Adam Sadler as he makes his way through Complex Nouvelle for the first time in the race. On board with Scott Clear in fourth place, right into the rear bumper here. But there's a cart off into the barriers from second place. It's Nathan Rawlings in the 101 cart right at the end of lap number one. So Adam Sadler there is going to have a comfortable lead of nearly a second and a half as gathering it back together is Nathan Rawlings. But he's going to rejoin in plum last place, 23rd position. So this then becomes the battle for second place. 24, Oliver Clark, just ahead of 116, Scott Clee. 27, Danny Ryder in fourth place at the end of the first lap from James Ford. He's going to cut the places in the number nine car to get up into fifth place. Back on board with Scott Clee. As the darkness sets in here, the floodlights are on at Rye House and he's about as close as he could be to the tail of the second place cart. There's no way through at the S's. You have to be patient, try and get a good exit onto the start, finish straight. And Clee has done just that. It gives him a chance on the way into stadium. Maybe a hint of contact between the two of them because Oliver Clark had to forcefully close the door there where Scott Clee tried to find a gap but wasn't really there. But he got an excellent run up to stadium, which is what gave him the chance. Then we've got number 27, Danny Ryder, coming on to the tail of them now as well. Further back, that's 82, Paul Hoyle and 6, John Scott, squabbling over 19th place. Rear bumper detached on the 82 cart, so that's sparking away. Oh, and Danny Ryder spins from fourth place in the 27 cart. Number nine, James Ford off in avoidance as well. So that's fourth and fifth tumbling down the order. I think Ryder just ran wide on the way out of the corner. A wheel on the dirt and he oversteered into a spin. So up to fourth place now comes Andrea De Luca, number eight. Then it's Lee Sullivan, 68 and 77. Ross Meekin in fifth and sixth positions. There they are on the way down into the hairpin. A look for Meekin at the inside and he clambers all over the top of Sullivan's cart. He went for the gap, the door closed. There was contact and right up into the air went Ross Meekin as he flew over Sullivan's cart. Here is a replay, goes for the move and then it doesn't quite fit. They rub wheels and a hairy looking moment, but luckily the cart landed the right way around. Here's from another angle. He got the line, he got alongside. But it wasn't quite room, Sullivan didn't quite see him coming. And, well, you can see what he thinks about all of that, but luckily they're both OK. So that's four drivers from the top ten having incidents in the last lap or so. Still battling away for second place. We've got 24, Oliver Clark, just ahead of Scott Clee. But Clee now gets the inside line on the way into the outfield hairpin. A nice move, he worked it on the previous hairpin. And after a patient drive, he gets through into second place. And there in the white race suit, seventh is number seven, Paul Hibbard, with a train of carts right behind him, including number 17, Damien Evans. The race leader making his way through the traffic now, over the line in second, just over three seconds behind him is Scott Clee. Uh, there's the squabble for fourth place, Andrea De Luca being reeled in by John Soul in the number 46 cart. There they come, Alfie Cockrell not far behind them as well in the 53 machine. If they start to squabble, they'll get in on the action. As 41, Michael Boswell and 50, Winston Bent go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the battle for 12th place. Nose to tail for fourth place, De Luca and Sol through the S's for the penultimate time in the race. Andrea De Luca still just ahead of John Sol, but under intense pressure. The race leader makes his way through Stadium Bend on the final lap of the race now. He looks comfortable for the London Cup victory. 
but this is the closest battle inside the top six and it is getting ever tighter half a lap also for John Sol to try and make a move and ready to pick up the pieces 53 Alfie Cockerell who's just just frustratingly out of touching distance with that squabble he can see them but he can't quite reach them the chequered flag is about to come out though and it's been a comfortable victory for Adam Sattler he wins the 2017 London Cup in Rotax 177 Scott Clee and Oliver Clark come home next, the latter having narrowly pipped Andrea De Luca to the final spot on the podium, with John Sol and Alfie Cockerell rounding out the top six. Many congratulations to all of this year's London Cup champions, including Bambino iArmy winner Joseph Katsantonis. When you were at the front like that, was it hard to keep concentrating when you were on your own? Um... It was okay, but it was o it was really easy because I just I didn't have to push that much because I don't think they should have caught up with me. And Lewis Islin is the proud new Bambino Coma champion. It was my first ever race, so I didn't I didn't really know how to really keep up with them that much. But and at the end, I started getting really used to it. Anybody you'd like to thank that's helped you? Daddy. There's a lot of work, doesn't he? Yeah. Well done, Lewis. It was a great, great way to uh, end the weekend. Well done. Thanks. An excellent Honda Cadet final went the way of Oliver Greenall. I got in the lead on about lap four and then I managed to keep the gap, but at the end when I caught up to the back markers, I got held up a little bit and um, I nearly got overtaken, but I managed to hold him off until the end. In Rotax 177, it was a convincing victory for Adam Sadler to take the title, while Spencer Barrow was promoted from third to first to become this year's senior Rotax champion. Across the line third, uh, technical infringement with the first and second. It's not the way I would have liked to have won it, but you know, win to win, so I'll take that. You had a pretty massive battle of your own out there, didn't you? I did, yeah. I was really determined to get on the podium. I was fourth going into last or second to last corner. I really wanted to make it happen, so across the line third, like I said, but yeah, turned into a win in the end. So if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have won, so glad I didn't give up. So that concludes this year's London Cup, a day of excellent racing, at the end of which we saw the crowning of some very worthy new champions. Thanks for watching.